Welcome to episode 51 of In Touch with iOS, a podcast that talks about iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and related technologies plus tips, apps, and gear. I am your host, Dave Ginsberg, and my guest this week is Donna Cleveland from the iPhone Life magazine. She's the editor-in-chief. How are you doing, Donna? I'm great. Hey, David. Thanks for having me on your show. Oh, I'm glad, glad to have you here, and I, I thought you'd be a great resource this week as a as a guest uh, to talk about all things iOS, since you kind of focus on that a little bit, don't do not. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. And it's exciting with the upcoming event that we're looking like we're going to have. So yeah, yeah. So I fig- lots to talk about. I figured, we get, I, I figured I tapped some good topics here during this week. So um, so we're going to talk a little bit about the news like I always do. And uh, we have uh, a couple great topics. Uh, uh, Donna wrote a really awesome article in iPhone Life this month, uh, uh, this issue on the Apple Watch, and I figure we both had experiences using the watch uh, across the board. This would be a great discussion. Um, and uh, we, we, there are some uh, rumors about the uh, the news app, so we're going to talk a little about the news app and the news as well as uh, as a topic, uh, and we'll break that down. And then some iOS tips, which you also wrote some great uh, stuff in the magazine. So I'm going to be plugging your magazine. I can <laughs> help you just for for being here. So and our app picks, and we'll wrap up. So uh, let's uh, just go right in and start talking about the news. Uh, the first uh, uh, the first uh, article I caught my eye was um, there's a study that finds that the iPhone XS Max, which I have, uh, experiences more than twice as fast LTE speeds as the i5s users on average. And uh, I would probably attest to that because it is a pretty fast phone. I know which which phone do you have? I still have the iPhone 10 actually. Oh, okay. I Yeah, I upgraded last year and I loved it. Yeah. And I wasn't really convinced based on <laughs> you know, based on all the specs of the new phone that it was really worth upgrading again this year. But I will yeah. say friends of mine who have the 10s max and I've gotten to hold it, like do love the yeah. larger display I'm showing, showing and... it on camera for you here, but I've got, the, <laughs> I've got the case. And so, which I am absolutely loving. I talked about that in the last episode. Um, you love your 10s max. I love the lot, love the 10s max. And I also added bulk by adding the smart case to it with the battery. So, Oh, uh, right. Cool. So, so I'm getting two full days of uh, battery charge that I have to do anything. I don't have to think about it. So, well, that's another topic. Uh, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it was interesting to see in this article, they talked a little bit about, how the the download speeds um, really were b- quite a difference between ac- across the board on a lot of the of the uh, the different iPhones, um, and you have the ten, so it's showing the ten here, and it was a, 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 they say about uh, seventeen. It was at eighteen point five. Actually, the ten was faster than the ten R. That's awesome. Uh, but the uh, the the, the ten S Max was right at the top there at twenty one point seven. Uh, that's what it says in the bar graph here. So. Uh, that's great to hear. Great to hear that these phones are getting faster, and uh, obviously things will change when 5G comes out uh, soon. If uh, not, unless, unless AT&T continues to mislead people about the yes. 5G. So, uh, did you have any thoughts on that? Yeah. Well, I was just curious what your thoughts are on the 10R because that's okay. just to me that's another knock <laughs> on the 10R. Like I feel like um, yeah. I. I feel like the lack of the OLED display yeah. to me was something that made me really not want to go for the 10R. I was just curious if you think any if it's right for anyone oh. or if you're better off just getting the 10. No, uh, well, yeah, if the 10's still available, I don't. I know there had been been some rumblings that maybe Apple might bring it back, uh, mm. but the uh, the 10S is expensive, and there's no question about it. I mean, if you the 10R, 10S, I mean, size wise, are exactly the same. Um, I've said it on the show many times. I, I think the 10R is a perfectly capable iPhone. I mean, for, for someone who's just looking for a great iPhone and doesn't want to spend a ton of money on it, and you're not really, I mean, really the only features of difference are going to be the uh, the camera and, like you said, the OLED display, and uh, that's yeah. it. So you're really not going to notice a huge difference unless you're like me and others who love uh, the cutting edge and technology because I always buy everything new. So <laughs> Yeah, one thing I will say is I, I recently bought the... Um, the budget 2018 iPad. Mm -hmm. And I thought I was like, Oh, I don't really need any of the extra features that come with the pro, but I've gotten really spoiled by the OLED display. And now (laughs) having a device that doesn't have that, I really notice the difference. You do. You do. Um, so that's one thing I, I will say against the 10 R, but I think you're right that if you have, Mm -hmm. especially if you're upgrading from an older device and it's been a couple of years, like I wouldn't upgrade from the 10 to the 10 R definitely not, but Uh, if it's been a few years, I agree that it's still a great device. No, I mean, um, the, the 10 is perfectly fine. I'm, that's why I can, I mean, I had the 10 and I went to the 10 S max. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I would be curious to try, to try out 
the LTE speeds comparing the 10 to the 10R and seeing if you if you would notice the difference that much. If you look uh, at the based numbers, the they're pretty yeah, close. I mean, they're pretty close. So, pretty I mean, close. if you're going to make a decision based on this, eh, I don't think it's that important. I, yeah. I just I just wanted to bring it out to our listeners. Be aware that that, that speeds are just continually are increasing. It's just incredible. Um, and who it knows? We, we have an exciting year ahead of us with with 2019. Doing uh, all the new announcements will be coming out uh, the next uh, six six months or so. With uh, well, we got the uh, the announcements coming up in March. And then of course you have WWDC <laughs> and and uh, so there's going to be a lot of stuff coming out this year. There, uh, our Mac rumors this morning was just cav- all kinds of stuff that they're talking about: new iPads and new iMac. There's just this all kinds of stuff. So. This is exciting times as always. And it looks like it's great to hear see that Apple is really um, being more aggressive and getting new products to us. Yeah, definitely. I'm excited for iOS 13 too. Yeah. We had a lot of uh, a lot of our readers write in telling mm-hmm. us all the features they're hoping to see with iOS 13. Right. Be curious to see see what Apple will be coming out with. Yeah, well, you know what? We'll and I think that we'll take a spin of our, our topic on iOS tips and we'll talk about that a little bit uh, uh, when we get to that if you don't if Okay, that's okay fun. Yeah. So. Yeah, that'd be great. All right, let's move on to the ne- next article. Um, uh, Apple's going to announce a TV service at their March 25th event, but uh, they're saying the launch might be a few months off. Well, I mean, I'm not surprised because Apple's really been starting to take their focus off of iPhone because, of course, the announcement at the end of last year that they lost money. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm sorry. They made billions of dollars, but they lost money anyway, right? <laughs> uh, and uh, they... Uh, uh, they are looking at services. I mean, they're seeing that services are is a big piece. It's a big piece of a lot of companies. I mean, look at Google, mm-hmm. look at Microsoft. They all do, they all do services, and that's where they make their money. I mean, that's you can't physical devices just just don't cut it anymore. So, this is yeah. A, I mean, it's somewhat unusual actually that Apple has been able to make so much money off of devices exactly. for so long. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So. Um, so they're looking at starting up a TV service. It looks like they're going to be similar to a Netflix or uh, or something of that effect. Um, and uh, I guess would be the, the the interesting thing would be is just what kind of exclusive deals like you st- we have in the notes here, what they're going to get. I know HBO was on the fence still, uh, and and I doubt Disney would get in on it. I, what's your thoughts? Yeah, no, I agree that I uh, I added Disney to the notes more just as an it's an it's interesting timing considering yeah. that Disney. Uh, well, I don't know the exact date, but it was sometime in April. Disney is going to be launching its right. own TV streaming service. So Apple releasing their service right around the same time is interesting and in that they don't seem to yeah. mind going head to head with Disney. Yep. Um, one thing that I was uh, reading was that Apple's having a hard time. Apple likes to take a pretty big cut out of right now. Yes. If, if, uh, if you try to sign up for Netflix, you can only do it online. You can't do it through right. your through the app store because Apple takes 30% of that. Right. And so I'm curious if they'll, if Apple will be making deals with Hulu and Netflix so that you yeah. through this TV streaming service, you can like get access to everything. Or if you're still going to have to be, you know, signing up for Apple's new TV, Apple's new TV service right. separately from all these other ones, which I mean, I know at least for me, it's becoming a headache to have to manage oh, so many different sure. subscription services. So I would be a lot more interested in this service if they did manage to combine it into just one, one right. central place you manage everything. I don't um, agree. Yeah, what do you what do you think will happen in that regard? I think Apple's gonna. I know Apple can be very aggressive when it comes to negotiating a lot of this stuff. I don't think Hulu is gonna probably make the cut because I think Hulu is a is a much bigger service and they're kind of a competing service really. So I'd be very surprised that if Apple were to, uh, to 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 get into that, I think HBO for sure is going to get on it. And of course, the other the networks, Showtime, uh, some of the other uh, cable cable networks will probably jump in as well. Um, it's going to be interesting to see also where where the where their services go through. Now, if it's not necessarily through the Apple TV, because we talked about it in previous episodes about the smart the smart TV uh, partnership with uh, the AirPlay two and being able to. Uh, go to the to the iTunes and the Apple stores to be able to watch content directly on your TV without even the need of an Apple TV. Um, so right, uh, yeah, I know that was interesting to see uh, at uh, CES this year how so right. many new TVs were coming out with that, which is pretty cool. I mean, I love my Apple TV, but oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> but it's nice nice for people who you know that's right. have you- the new Samsung TVs or whatever and don't need to have. No, don't need to purchase one. And that's right. You were at CES and you saw a lot of those TVs. Uh, there, I'm sure there was 
lots of TVs that you saw out there. Oh yeah. Uh, and uh, um, yeah, that I I I was just I was kind of surprised that Apple is doing that, but that really is telling us and telling I think I'm telling a lot of people that Apple really wants to get into the services business, and that's why they're going to put their their services wherever they need to put it to get it out there. I know it does make sense now that they're coming out with a TV service that they just want to yeah. put it in front of as many, make it accessible to as many people as possible yeah. instead of being, you know, solely tied to the Apple TV. So, but yeah, I'm curious too. I wasn't finding anything reliable about how much this is going to cost no. as well. It seems like a yeah. lot of it is still pretty Rumor. vague. Um, I heard $10 a month. Maybe I think that would be reasonable. Uh, maybe, maybe more, maybe more, it's, maybe it's more than that because, you know, they got to compete with Netflix. I mean, Netflix is charging what, $15 a month. So I don't think they yes. want to go out, outside of, of, of what that is. You know, it all depends on the content and what they decide really. I'm, and I'm kind of, I always, I've been getting both these stories confused with the news app and the, the added up subscriptions of magazines versus we'll have a good discussion on that. Yeah. And, and, and the TV. So I get, I got both those confused when I was talking about this originally. So, uh, so there is two, two different things that Apple's going to be t- probably talking about uh, and announcing at that event. So we'll talk about the news uh, app la- uh, later. So, uh, but yeah. And with the, with the TV service, it sounds like we're not, it, they're just going to preview it. Whereas the right. news service, they might actually be making available right, right. away or at least soon. Right. But I was hearing that it might even be as late as fall this year that yeah. we, before we get the TV streaming right. service, wouldn't be surprised. Look at the which Air- would be <laughs> AirPods Two and the and the and the, the wireless charging mat. That's what <laughs> over a I year know. over a year in the making here. So. And now it doesn't look like we're getting. They're going to announce those at this announcement yeah. either. Like it's just going to be services. Yeah. That's what you've been hearing too, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. they just like last year when they they announced the the new iPad that they were in Chicago actually here and uh, at the school and, and it's the same thing. They just announced the new iPad and new the new crayon and 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 the, and the partnerships with the schools. I mean, I uh-huh. think this, this event's going to be probably very similar. Just 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 brief announcements, uh, but ever, but they like it because everybody gets excited about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, most of the time this time of year it's an iPad announcement. This will be yeah. a first in. Well, first ever, really. And there's rumors about iPads, but I, like I said, I don't. They have already said no. There's no way they're talking about it during this event. They want to focus on services. That makes sense. Yeah. So, but go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, I was curious, like what what makes you sign up for the TV streaming services that you do? It because for me, a lot of it's the original content, mm-hmm. which. So I'm really curious about Apple's original content and what they'll bring to the table. And I, I, I'm curious if that's what they'll be, if that's going to be their biggest selling point, what they're hoping to hook people with, or if it's going to be more of their Uh, deals with the different networks. Well, like the, like the article, easy for people. Yeah. Like the article mentions, they have part, they're, they're they're including stars like Jennifer Aniston, Reese Witherspoon, Steve Carell. Yeah. uh, And all of he'll have roles in Apple shows. I mean, uh, uh, the uh, what, what was that show they had? The uh, Planet of the Apps was horrible. <laughs> I don't know if you liked it, but if you showed uh, I didn't. The, I didn't watch that. The, the, plan, the Planet of the Apps. It was a uh, it was a reality show about oh. Uh, about uh, oh yeah I a- heard about that. App developers. I, okay, so you didn't see it? No, yeah, no, I well, didn't see it. Was it? It wasn't good. It's yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was it was it was rough to watch in some episodes. Just uh, but uh, but literally they got Carpool Karaoke. They partnered uh, with. Um, uh, James Corden, and uh, he, they got that show going. So I mean, I, that's a start. What they got into to the original programming, but I'm I would ve- yeah. I would venture to say with all the connections they have in Hollywood, I bet I'm betting that uh, they will get some pretty pretty awesome original content. Just like like you said, Netflix has got some awesome stuff. Um, yeah. So does so does Hulu. So that, that that's that's where they're competing with is those are the, those are their two big competitors with this. Even um, Amazon, and Amazon has some Prime, good, right. has some good original content as well. Um, Miss Maples, <laughs> or, or yeah, Apple's true. partnering with Oprah too. Oprah, I right. was, yeah. yeah, so oh yeah, so I, but that do you think that the Planet of the Apps doesn't bode well for what no. their original content will be, or do you think? No, that's, I think it's. I think that's going to get put into the into the vault for, of one of the shows <laughs> that were not that great. So because they haven't, it, I think it's been well over a year since uh, the last uh, episodes were were uh, were made so uh, but i think yeah, you're right i i agree with you that i think a lot of this content is going to be original they're going to they're really looking and seeking out uh, different uh, different content providers now yeah, oprah should be interesting she's got a lot of good ideas and people who have been in the tv business that's what they need they get need people that uh, are very knowledgeable about this yeah i think my guess would be the the original content is where this service is going to shine yeah. i 
I don't, I can't see them bringing together all of the different services in a way that's that convenient. Like you said, the, the, they're yeah. unlikely to partner with eight, with uh, Hulu right. and Netflix. So you're still going to have to manage all of those things separately. Right. Also that Apple was planning on taking 50%. Yeah. Oof. For the TV. I, so that, I mean that, or 30%, like I huge. feel like, I mean, those, that's why it's probably a very difficult uh, negotiation process with, uh, with these, uh, these providers, what they want to provide this content if they're taking that much. Yeah. So, which maybe Steve Jobs wouldn't be able to pull off those negotiations. Possibly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, he, he probably would be smiling and looking down on us right now. On that. So, uh, but uh, anyway, let's, let's move on. And as I do with all of my new guests, I always uh, like to find out what iOS uh, devices and, and what you use uh, when all the time. And uh, I've, I've asked lots of my guests in the past uh, 15 or so episodes of my guests and uh, always has interesting answers, but I have this feeling that Donna, you have uh, quite a few devices that you use. <laughs> well, I, as I said before, I have the iPhone 10, iPhone 10 right? Which I love. Um, around the office, some people have not enjoyed Face ID, but I, I really, I like it. I like the mm-hmm. Face ID and the OLED display, and the fact that it's. I, I actually kind of like that it's a smaller form factor, mm-hmm. even though it would be nice to have the 10s Max and have that huge display in yeah. terms of just carrying it around. It's I like big. the size. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really happy with it. Um, I have the Apple watch series four, which, Me too. you know, as David mentioned, I can tell all of you about, uh, my experience upgrading from, the, I had the original Apple watch and Me I too. held on to that until this year. Oh, uh, wow. So you, you were a holdout. I was a holdout. We'll yeah. Talk so about I'm that. Really the Apple that. Watch um, and then the other device I have, well, I have, uh, the Apple TV. I don't have the 4k Apple TV. Yeah. I have an older Apple TV and then okay. I have the uh 2018 ipad the one that was the it's not the ipad pro okay so i have that which, the apple pencil which i have the ipad pro <laughs> oh you I'm, have the, the new be, ipad pro because i'm crazy yeah, <laughs> of course i do i have the 10s max i have the 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 ipad pro 2018 11 inch i have uh, my macbook pro is what 2017 uh the, what can I do? I mean, yeah, yeah, it's just, I'm yeah. crazy. I'm a crazy person. Unapologetic enthusiast. <laughs> no, I'm, I will not apologize whatsoever. Well, my <laughs> wife sometimes will question when I have to, uh, when I'm spending all this, why do you need to buy this? And I hear that a few times, but I said, honey, I need this because I want to stay on top of technology. Come on. It's fun. And I saw the other one. <laughs> So that's what I did. I had a 10 because I was like, like you said, you, you, you stay at the 10 and then 10 S or 10 S max is not a huge jump. Same thing yeah. with the, with the iPad. I had the 10.5 inch iPad uh, pro before that with the, the first gen pencil and I turned around and sold it, you know, sold it for get $750 for it. So, I mean, that, paid, yeah, I mean, it for most pretty of it. good value. Yeah. yeah. So, so that, so, uh, yeah. So I, I figured, I, I figured that you had a few of those devices and I've, uh, I mean, uh, that Christmas time, that that iPad did you have um, thirty two gig? They were selling it for like ridiculously cheap price. It was like two hundred forty nine dollars, and I think I just saw it on Amazon at that price a couple like a week or two ago. So, it's a great bargain, and it, for what it does, it's great. But I agree with you though; I definitely can tell the difference in the displays. It's uh, yeah, especially if you're used to it. So um, yeah, I bought it mainly for proofing yeah. uh, proofing yeah. articles, which is it's great for that with Apple pencil, sure. but for media viewing, which also the iPad's so yeah. great for you do notice that the display is not as amazing as the iPad pro. Yeah. Uh, our CEO, David has the new iPad pro. Right. The right up. Producer, <laughs> and so I've compared it side by side and it's, yeah. Yeah. He wrote a great article on that too. I mean, that's what I say. You guys got to read iPhone life. There's, there's, there's yeah. a lot of great information. <laughs> we'll talk about that. Uh, so let's move on. on the, uh, I'm glad to find out what your what what makes you click with iOS devices, but well, let's talk about one of them, the Apple Watch, and your experiences. Like you said, uh, you uh, you you started off with the Series Zero watch, uh, and uh, you you evolved from there. But let's uh, kind of go through some of your experiences and you know, some of the things that you talked about in your article about uh, about the, the watch in itself. Uh, and you said you, you you stayed at Series Zero, and then you did and then you didn't move until just recently with the Series Four, right? Yeah, I I kept it all these these years, and the main reason is. The, uh, what I loved about my Apple watch was the yeah. fitness tracking features sure. and those, I, f- I feel like Apple got, they got it right from the beginning. They uh, they made it really easy to use the three ring system that they came yeah. up with. I felt like was pretty intuitive and, and, you, and you like that. for someone, I'm not a hardcore athlete. I just, I just want to be healthier and more active. And sure. so 
even like some people have complained that their fitness tracking apps, like their own ones Mm -hmm. are not that like, they don't give you that much granular control over, over your workouts, which I would probably agree with. Mm -hmm. But for my purposes, it it was, it's been great. Mm -hmm. I feel like it, I can really credit my Apple watch for, uh, inspiring me to, to join a CrossFit gym. (laughs) Oh, nice. And so it, like I really established working out regularly thanks to my Apple watch and uh, at work, we started sharing our activity with each other using the Apple watch. And so, you you know, you get those notifications. Do you do that with any of your friends? Um, I need to be more active. I'm not as active as you are. I'll admit it. (laughs) Um, but I I mean, when I do a lot, I do walking and of course we've had lots of snow. I've been very busy with uh, clearing the snow off my driveway, uh, that kind of stuff. And then, you know, being an IT pro and working in an office, you know, I spend, I do a lot of walking around the office. So I get my lot of walking in there and look at my steps and such, cause I'm always going to a desk and to help somebody fix something. So, uh, but, uh, yeah. but, but I mean, and you're going to tap touch, talk, touch upon this a little bit. The ECG readings uh, and the fall detection was, was another you know thing that, that really uh, got me to go with the series four right away. Cause I had the series mm-hmm. three, so there was no huge jump. So, uh, uh, but, uh, yeah, I, sh- I need to do more, but you're going to, you're going to motivate yeah. me to get, get moving more. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's amazing. Like even, even when I started working out a couple times a week at this gym, mm-hmm. it was amazing to see what a big difference it makes to get up and walk around just mm-hmm. throughout the day. So, and, and how important that is based on health research, you know, just sitting forever is not great for you. So I also got a standing desk and it's one oh, that yeah. can be lowered. And yep. so I try to stand a few times a day. So I feel like it, the Apple watch really helped me establish those things. Mm-hmm. Um, so the reason that I decided to upgrade is this, the original Apple watch was just slow. Slow. Did you yeah. get it back I, then? Well, I, when I had the, the series zero, it was, it was fine for its time, but, uh, yeah, it got slow pretty quick. And again, me selling and upgrading, I sold it right away. And then I think I went to the <laughs> series two and then I went to the series three but I got a good tr- I got a good trade in with the Series Three at Apple. They actually gave me two hundred and seventy five dollars for it, which I really? thought was pretty awesome. You, know, you must take good care of your tech as well. I do. I mean, that's why everybody when they say, "Are you selling anything?" I said, "Yeah, I might be selling something. I have an iPhone. You want to look at it?" And because it's always very yeah, I, I'm usually pretty good with my tech. So, uh, but Apple was as long as it doesn't have like a big crack or uh, on the display or anything, they that they were pretty open to take it. So, uh, yeah, but. I mean, what the what my main motivation was the foot the series four. As soon as I saw the display, oh my gosh, the display! I what, know. A, what a difference! What a difference the display is, and this ECG. I was it ECG or EKG? I thought it was one of the two. I guess you can. I guess they're both correct. At first, okay. I thought ECG was the only correct uh, way, but I okay. guess they're both used okay. as, uh, you know. So, yeah, the reason I upgraded is the the design. This, even though it's only slightly thinner to your wrist, for yeah. like I have a pretty small wrist, and so yeah. the other one looked a little bulky. And I've right. been surprised at how how much nicer this one looks. Yeah. Uh, and like you said, the brighter display and mm-hmm. even like inkier blacks. I feel like the it, it it's great. Um, I've been happy that well. The battery is about the same. I was gonna say yeah. the battery just barely lasts me the day. Yeah, uh, yeah, I've been all day going in it all day, and I'm still up, still at eighty two percent. So I must not have been doing too many active things today <laughs> with my watch, uh, phone or like too many heart readings too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I. Uh, the, it's been nice. Some you know, with the original watch, you couldn't even update to Watch OS five. Right. So that was also a reason to update so that I could use because now they have automatic workout detection, which I've been enjoying. Yeah. If I just start yeah. walking to lunch or something, it'll I, start logging an outdoor walk for me. Um, and you can now track yoga and hiking. I I don't hike much around here. It's, you know, Iowa winter, but I do go to yoga. And so that's nice. Um, and they've added some new, more advanced fitness features, like you pacing your outdoor runs. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that you can see if you're staying up with your average pace or if you can Mm -hmm. slow down, things like that. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was curious. Have you used the walkie-talkie feature yes. at all? Yes, I have. And we actually, um, uh, with Allison Sheridan, who actually is going to be on next week, pl- shameless plug, uh, <laughs> is uh, uh, we, her and I did a test on it and tried it out. And I've done it with my wife. I've done it with a couple others. It's it's fun. I mean, it, it, uh, it, it you get quick quick ways of talking to somebody and it's just, it, it works and it works really well. I don't know if you've had, have you been able to try it out or not? Or? I have. Yeah. I've used it with my husband. He has the 
he has the series three uh, cellular Apple yeah. watch. Yeah. And so he, he loves it. Yeah, he sure. loves that the cellular version just because he doesn't need to carry his phone around and he yeah. likes to be more unplugged. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, we use the walkie talkie more just for the fun of it. Like I haven't found a super practical use for it no. yet. Eh, other than a quick, a quick way to talk to somebody if you need to. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll hit you on that debate a little bit about the cellular versus non-cellular. I, I, I personally find that the cellular is not worth any value to me because I'm, I always have my iPhone with me because I'm, I'm crazy. i got to <laughs> have it in my pocket no matter what I do. I was like, where's my phone? Where's my phone? And it's in my hand all 24, probably, no, then I'll, I'll take the eight hours when I sleep. It's sitting on my nightstand. <laughs> so... Uh, I'm with you on that. Yeah, so I just didn't find the value of having a cellular in I mean, because it's a hundred, it's like over a hundred dollars more in price, and then plus you got to pay the extra and the monthly fee, the monthly fee yeah. on top of it. So I mean, I just didn't find it uh, necessary. I've done many times. I've had phone calls on my watch with the iPhone in, in, in conjunction with my iPhone, and it's worked perfectly fine for me. I, I think that me that, too. That, that that is right. So hey, say we in agreement here. <laughs> I guess your husband's not as much well, into that yeah. agreement. So to represent his view of it, yeah. um, he he's someone who does not. He he he's sort of more resistant to technology in yeah. that he doesn't like always staring at his screen okay. and finds that if he has, he's more addictive personality, I guess. So as long as his phone is around, he is always staring at his screen. Mm -hmm. So that freedom of being untethered from your phone for him has a really high value. Um, mm -hmm. also he plays tennis and teaches tennis pretty uh, regularly. And gotcha. so it's, it is really nice. Like you don't want to have your phone in your pocket sure. then. Sure. And so being able to be like no. someone can reach you while you're doing something active. That's really nice. I know our COO, Noah, he's a, his, a soccer coach for his kids. Mm -hmm. And he also has the cellular watch and loves that because, yeah. you know, his wife can get in touch with him and let him sure. know, you know, to pick up milk on the way home or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he gets all of his notifications still. But I, yeah, it, it is, it's not an, uh, uh, it's not that small of a fee. I think it's $12 a month yeah. that we pay for his Apple watch connection. So I sure. feel like unless you're going to use it pretty regularly, it might not be worth it, but what's, what's, you the know, what's your carrier out there? Verizon. Verizon. Okay. Verizon's the best network okay. near um, us. Well, T-Mobile has been great for us. So for me, I, oh, switched, really? I just switched recently from AT&T to T-Mobile. So um, in more, we're, we're in more of a rural, rural area. Yeah, T-Mobile right. is yeah, like yeah. no good. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, yeah, that's, Unfortunately they're getting better. They're getting better. Yeah. yeah but, and T Mobile, I think Verizon is one of the more expensive carriers. It so is. No, we're getting a great deal. We're only it. using it because we have to. <laughs> Six phones, two hundred dollars a month. That's all we pay. <laughs> so it's a good deal. Uh, wow. So you had a couple other features in here, uh, including raised awake. I mean, I haven't used that much. Um, oh, actually, I, it does. When I raise my watch, it wakes up and, and it shows you um, the display. Is that uh, or is that what you're talking about in the raised awake? Well, that and then also that you can use it Siri without saying. Hey okay. Siri, right. that was kind of interesting. I, I more just, whoops, <laughs> I uh, tested that feature out just to try it with the watch, but I yeah. haven't, and it was cool that it worked, but yeah. now I haven't used it much. Yeah. And then, yeah, waterproof GPS support is awesome. Yeah. The GPS support's been great in Series 4. I agree with you 100% on that one. And then um, I have not t t talked too much about the uh, topo maps and a uh, few oh. Ranger and R the REI coop. coop. Yeah. Oh, I put that in there. Those are just apps that I, oh, I apps. thought you put okay. in there that Apple Watch apps that we like. And so I oh, wanted okay. to talk gotcha. about those. But um, oh, yeah, just the last thing with the, I was curious with the EKG readings or oh, ECG yeah, yeah. readings. Have yeah, we, you, didn't really talk, we didn't talk much about that. Though. Yeah. Have you? I mean, those are the really amazing <laughs> yes, features of yes, the Apple yes. Watch. But I guess in my daily life, I haven't used them a whole lot. But sure. I do. I find it comforting that yeah, if I were too. to take a fall that um that, you know, after a minute, if you don't move after a hard fall, it'll call yeah. 911. Yeah, I probably should have had it. I didn't have it turned on and I fell on the ice. Back oh, the really? Yeah. So I, I, I didn't have it on because I, you know, because I heard it drives people crazy when it, it over senses, you know, I guess when you're over 65 and it knows it, it does it, it automatically turns it on. Um, oh, really? I don't know if you knew that, but uh, yeah, anybody no, that's I, over the age I, of 65 and you put your birthday information in, it automatically turns the falling, the fall detection on. Uh, so otherwise, everybody else has to turn on by default. So, uh, but no, I didn't have a turn on, and I fell. So, um, but luckily, I was. It was a quick. I got up quick. So you were okay. So you're probably happy. You still had it off. So like the ambulance didn't yeah, show up. Well, they, that was close. I'm still pretty sore from, from that tumble. Oh man, the ice, ice uh, got got me, got the best of me. So, 
Yeah, uh, for but, listeners who are not in the Midwest yes. or not in a cold place, I feel like we've just been dealing with well, it's been, ice uh, sheets with snow on top of it, which exactly. is the most, the most slippery combination ever. But yeah, um, fall. I really want my grandma to get an Apple Watch. She she's should. pretty. She's pretty tech savvy. Oh, she's turning ninety this year, wow, and she awesome. has she has an iPad and an iPhone and uses it. But I feel like that's it's such, the Apple Watch is such a nice way to have a health device instead of like a lifeline necklace or something. Yeah. So you're still wearing something stylish and techy and, you know, without okay. the need for something yeah, well, like that. Well, well, I'll put links to all three of the apps you suggested in the, in the show notes. So like, take a look at that. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, there, cool. there are some, there's lots of other apps. In fact, the news app is actually works pretty well. And I use the podcast app, of course. And, uh, uh, Walkie talkie, and then yeah, the, the heart, the heart, and oh, of course, of course, the home, home kit. You know, I have a home, you can ask, access your home kit, uh, d- d- uh, lighting from your watch, which is awesome. Um, so there's, there's lots of great apps out there, uh, and, uh, and, uh, we can, uh, probably spend an hour just talking about those all by themselves. So, I know. Uh, One so, last thing I enjoy with Apple Watch is controlling yeah, my music playback. Like if I have friends over yeah. and I'm playing mm-hmm. music from a speaker or something, how you can just control, like change the song or turn up or down the volume from your watch. Yep. I've got, a home pod here and I'll I'm putting my fingers here. You can see it. My home pod here and a home pod here. So I've I've done pair. I paired oh, cool. to, to a home pod. So yeah, I could control that from my watch as well. Um and uh, play stuff. So uh yes. Smart smart speakers are awesome and uh it's it, it's it's a great thing. I, I but you did have did you have one negative? I don't think you were I seem to remember in the article that you uh Um let me pull up the article. I mean one thing that just comes to mind right now is the design, I still think that. Oh, that's it. That, that was what I the comment. Yeah, I was gonna say. I think that they could still do a better job making it more feminine. Like I feel like from yeah. the beginning, the Apple Watch styles seemed more yeah. tailored to men. In in my opinion, um, okay. I know around the office that's a complaint <laughs> that I've mm-hmm. heard pretty regularly. Um, I yes. prefer round watch faces. Oh, okay. It would uh, be really nice if they had that option. So you um, have, but you had the forty millimeter, right? I assume the smaller one. Or do you yes. have the 44? Okay. Yeah, I have the smaller one. Uh, yeah. yeah, that was my, that was my my con. Um, yeah, that's the one I caught at my eye. I, uh, so, but that's yeah. The, and I mean, then in terms of like hardcore fitness people, I I think they still. Yeah. I've heard complaints about the Apple's fitness tracking features. They're getting better now with they have like pay, uh, pacing and cadence tracking, mm-hmm. but yeah. they could add some more customization options there as well. But for me, it's like perfectly adequate and I kind of appreciate that it's simple to use and yeah. doesn't have too many bells and whistles because right. I have compared a lot of fitness trackers side by side with the Apple Watch and some of them are kind of complicated to figure true. out. So this is true. Yeah. So overall I'm really thrilled with my series four. Yeah. Well me too. Me too. I, I knew you would be. <laughs> <laughs> so let's uh let's change gears here. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the news app. Um, and uh, I figured this would be right up your alley because uh, it does involve publishers and publishing and magazines right. and such. So um, there was a, there's a rumor that they're saying that the news app is going to have a subscription service. And, of course, if anybody isn't aware, uh, Apple, about a, about a year ago now, in March of last year, they bought the company called Texture. And Texture is a magazine subscription service that's all digital um that and are you guys are not on there are you i don't think you we're not no uh, so texture we're on was, the apple news app but no we're not are, on. the apple news app yeah. so uh but uh uh the uh, the texture uh, texture had subscriptions over 200 different magazines you would pay a flat fee like i think it's like ten dollars a month or whatever it is so i knew the apple was going to be doing something with that with that service sooner or later because that generally mm-hmm. they don't buy they don't buy uh, uh, a company unless they feel that's going to be something that they're going to get involved in so um, but the uh, the buzz is saying it's going to be uh, a subscription service that they're looking to to add, which will include this, the magazines I just described. And I think they're also negotiating uh, with uh, newspapers, which would be I would think would be bring it even more of a value. Uh, what do you think? I know for me, the if they bring in some new, some major newspapers, that I would be mm-hmm. very tempted because a lot of times I'm I'm I've been debating between New York times or Washington right. post or wall street journal, like which one do I want to subscribe to? And so if I could get one service for $10 a month, that gave me access to, mm-hmm. you know, either all of them and magazines or at least one of them in magazines that that would be pretty compelling. Right. I think, um, cause I feel like magazines, you know, with texture being around for a while mm-hmm. and you can also get, you know, through the Kindle app, you can read magazines. Like we're right. used to doing that and more of, this sort of way, but 
doing a subscription service for newspapers Mm -hmm. is something that is, would be, feel pretty new. Um, but yeah, everyone's calling it like the Netflix, like that it's going to be like the Netflix for, for For publishing. publishing. Yeah. Yeah. Which, yeah, I'm excited about, I think that, you know, since we have a magazine, that'd be something we would try to <laughs> yeah, take a look, get into see, potentially. I'll, well, obviously, costs is you got to look at the, the, the values of, of what it is for you, and uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, it, it's it's interesting to see. Um, if anybody's not familiar, there's a lot of news aggregators out there now. And my my favorite always was Flipboard. I don't know if you used Flipboard. Yeah, we use um, Flipboard, and we're yeah, on Flipboard. Yeah, so. Uh, but Apple News has gotten better and better. I think at when um, they released it for the Mac, I think it even got even more improved with the, with the way it manages a lot of the subscriptions. And what's great about it is it just aggregates all this stuff. I mean, of course, me being techie, I'm sure you're the same way. Uh, all the technology news is sitting right uh, right as the, as the first thing I see, and the, and all the different articles that I want to look at. Are yeah, right on my too. iPhone or iPad. So, but you can subscribe to any of the hundreds of of feeds that are out there uh, to to find out more about the news and. One of the cool things is the news app does is it all it it automatically sees what you're looking at and it kind of tries to customize it to to bring things to you that you're uh, interested in. So you know, top stories are generally going to be probably about the news, and I'm sure it's something that's talking about President Trump and <laughs> other stuff. So, uh, so uh, but that's what's cool about it. But with the subscription part of it, I'm 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 actually pretty excited about this. I I would probably be a subscriber too, especially if if they had newspapers. I mean, there's yeah. the, the big ones like New York Times and the Washington Post. I don't know, but I don't know if Wall Street Journal won't get involved in this at all. They're 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 pretty heavy duty with their pay paywall, so they charge a yeah, lot. Yeah, I wonder. They charge a lot for their their newspaper every year, so I think it's kind of like a hundred, a couple hundred, a hundred, hundred fifty dollars a year. So that's true. So for like a ten dollars a month service, I don't yeah. know if it'd be that's a, that's worth tough. it for them. But I know it would be because right now you can you can already subscribe to newspapers in the Apple News app right. and pay. Okay. But yeah. yeah, but getting it all under one ten dollar a month that because that's what is that the rumors that you yeah. uh have been seeing as well? Ten dollars a month. That's that this that's what it says in the article that we have a link uh, uh in the show notes with uh it, that it's saying it's a nine ninety nine a month nine ninety nine a month service that mm-hmm. would offer magazine access much like Texter, which from that like I said, I wasn't surprised. Uh, yeah. And there's a lot of magazines in the Texter. I mean, I think something over two hundred different magazines you can uh, get access to. So um but uh, as you know, magazine business is tough. It's very tough, and that's what yeah. people are trying to do with trying to getting into the digital world. And um, and uh, newspapers are doing the same thing. You know, I mean, not, there's there's a local newspaper here I sub- I subscribe to, but you feel bad for them because they they charge for you know, minimal cost because you know, and you know, working being in a, in a smaller town in a rural area, with, uh, those newspapers are hard to comp- they're hard to having trouble t- tough time competing uh, with these types of services. So, yeah. Definitely. It's a tough, <laughs> tough business. Um, but, uh, yeah, the, the one thing with Mag, the reason I haven't subscribed to texture sure. up to this point is that I still do enjoy paper? like physically. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I'm one of the, like I, I, for the newspaper, I would not want a physical paper every day and all that paper yeah. waste and stuff too. But with a magazine, there is something yeah. great to me about having the physical copy. Well, that's good. So you that's guys are it. still doing it and still having the the because a lot of the other technology magazines have have gone digital only. So yeah, that's true. Except for then CNET, which surprisingly, you know, in the recent years launched a physical magazine, which was seems like a surprising move. Yeah, so they're owned by CBS now, so they got they got some big budgets there. Deep pockets, yeah. Um, so. Yeah, well, check out the news app, and uh, and uh, again, once the once they talk about this back in March, I think that they're, they're saying March twenty fifth is going to be the uh, as the announcement, and uh, it's be definitely going to be interesting to see where uh, where we go with uh, with that. So, yeah. Um, so let's uh, we'll change another gear here, and uh, let's go into let's discuss a little bit about uh, iOS twelve tips um, and some of the tips that you t- that you shared with uh, the read- your readers, and as well as uh, you know, and we can start off a little bit. You you wanted we were you were talking about iOS thirteen people's. Uh, uh, you've got a lot, a lot of your readers that uh, were giving some great ideas of what they thought. Yeah. So the big, the thing that we've been hearing the most from people is that they want to be able to mark text messages as unread. Hmm. So you know how in your mail app you can just swipe left and mark your messages as unread, and that just makes it easy if you don't have a chance to respond in the hmm. moment. You when you go back later and just look at your unread mail, you'll still have it there. Uh, in your mm-hmm. in your list with that little blue dot next to it. So with text messages, you can't do that. Once you've looked at it, it's just marked as 
as read. And so it makes it really hard to, you know, you have to have a good memory unless you respond in the moment. Otherwise it's just going to get lost in your stream of text messages. Yeah. So that's something I've gotten into trouble for not responding to people because yeah. of this. Cause a lot of times if I'm in a meeting, I'll see something sure. quickly and forget. Um, but I was really, I was kind of surprised to see so like so many of our readers wrote mm. in about that. Sure. Another one that we've been wanting for years is multiple user support for the iPad. I mean, it'd be nice for the iPhone as well, but a lot of people use iPads as a family device or a work device that, you know, several people want access to. And it would be so nice, just like you can on your computer to be mm -hmm. able to switch users. And that seems to me like something really app, like the Apple definitely has the capability to do it and that they should have done years ago. Mm -hmm. yep. um, so those are two, two features that uh, oh, I know another one that a lot of people want is a dark mode uh, with Check Mac OS Mojave. I've been using the dark mode. dark mode and I really enjoy that. It'd be awesome to have that on the iPad. I think they were rumoring, with the, with, I think they were rumoring about that com coming. I mean, some, some, been some rumors out there. I, I would not be surprised because they did it in Mojave and I think everybody's very happy with it on Mojave. I, I love it. I, I, I'm like totally used to it now. I don't, I, when I go on to a Mac that doesn't have it, I was like, oh God. Gotta close my eyes, or it's dark. It's uh, it's not it's not dark enough for me. Uh, yeah. You, do you have any features that you're hoping they'll bring out with iOS 13? Nothing that stands out right now. Um, I should I should have thought of it at an early time, but we thought about this topic just as we were going here today. So, um, not off the top of my head. Uh, but those those three, I would probably agree with, uh, especially multi user support. Um, yeah, people, there are a lot of families that want that all that use i iPad, uh, just like I mean, when you have a, when you have a Mac, you have separate user accounts if you want to sign into a different account. Uh, why are, why yeah. can't they do the same thing with an iPad? Well, um, it just makes it tricky because it to like you don't really want to sign in with your Apple ID and necessarily have all of your exactly. photos and text messages and things like that be accessible to everyone in your family. So yeah, that's a big one. Um, I'm just I'm pulling up my notes here. There we yeah. have uh, the ability to oh better search for the mail app. I don't know if you've noticed. Mm -hmm. But the mail app search is just terrible. Oh, <laughs> it's terrible. really hard to find anything in there. So if they could work on that. Um, a lot of people wanted photo management, better photo management, like being able to mm -hmm. name photos, being able to organize them in different ways. Right now, Apple doesn't offer a, a, yeah. a ton of sorting options besides being able to create albums. Yeah. Um, mm. <laughs> <laughs> I've got some maps request here. Oh, being able to have multiple stops along your route, right? Right now you can diverge from your route and then go right. back, but they, they don't have that feature that Google maps has where you can do multiple stops, gotcha. which would be really nice. So let's, uh, let's, I mean, I can't wait as always. I mean, I, I have a developer account that I'm not a developer and why I have one is beyond me, but I mean, <laughs> have anyway, because I love playing with beta. Uh, yeah, me too. I, tend to have extra devices i will not put it on my primary device like then i've told said that many times on this show smart uh, but uh i do have an old ipad air from when uh, we just upgraded my 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 mother-in-law she she got the same ipad you have uh so i've got this ipad air i can play with now so i'm gonna i'm gonna hold on to it because it, it still has some value left but uh uh what the heck I have it for a little while it was, it's sometimes been nice when i'm out i want to have the ipad you know, when i'm working on something and then my my iPad Pro, and then I have the other iPad with a, with a, with like like a document on it. I want to s search through. Uh, uh, crazy! I'm carrying two iPads. Me right, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but sometimes it, uh, it it works out. But not everybody has that luxury. So, um, but anyway, let's uh, let's uh, dig some a little bit into some of the uh, discussion that you did uh, in your article about uh, uh, different some different iOS tips. And I've talked about a lot of these tips before, but I'd like to hear a different perspective, obviously from. Someone who is very good at this stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, so the first thing was group notifications, and I love group notifications. And I've gone through that. I've done demos at uh, um, at, at conferences before on this, and uh, pe people just don't don't get it. But uh, you you wrote a people good, don't good, get you know, it. But sometimes I, they don't get it. They don't get how to use them or or, or even wear them. But that for that matter. So, uh, kind of give give our listeners a little bit of what you're, what you talked about uh, with these notifications. Sure. Yeah, this would be also one of my favorite iOS 12 features. Yeah. And, you know, in the past, um, for any listeners who didn't know this, a lot uh, your notifications would just be sorted chronologically as so they would just show up in a list mm -hmm. and the most recent would be at the top and you'd go down from there. So yeah. 
the reason that this was not great is for apps, for instance, breaking news apps, you right. might get 12 different news notifications, mm-hmm. but they're going to be mixed in with your messages and different things. You can't just see them all in one place. Right. Now with iOS 12, all of your notifications from a particular app or mm-hmm. category will be sorted into like a stack that just shows up right. automatically on your screen and you can tap it and it expands. So one of the reasons I love this is for things like breaking news. So I can just tap my yep. news notifications and read through all the breaking news notifications of the day yep. when I have the time to do that and then swipe left to clear them all once you're done reading them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is really great. One Another feature of group notifications is that you can manage your settings for them right from the lock screen without going into the settings app. Yep. And, you know, it's not that hard to go into the settings app, but I feel like a lot of people have a mental block against it. Like <laughs> yeah. they don't want to yes. go in there and mess with their settings. So now you can just swipe left on a stack of notifications yeah. and hit manage. And from there, if you, if you're getting too many notifications from an app and it's bothering you, then you can just tap deliver quietly yep. and you will no longer, uh, okay. With deliver quietly, let's see. Yeah. It'll keep the app in your notification center, but it won't show up on your lock screen. Right. So it doesn't so, drive you crazy on your lock screen. And I remember yeah. I, I demonstrated this at my Apple user group and, uh, there was a lot of people who were li- like that feature. Yeah, I feel like a, most of my friends, at least, don't yeah. want to go into the settings app. <laughs> so yeah. being able to just manage it from there is much preferable. Yeah. So yeah, I enjoy that a lot. It's just it makes my lock screen feel a lot less cluttered. Sure. Um, and you uh, uh, and you know, controlling your privacy that was that's that's good to being able to turn that off if you if you don't if you want to be private, well, be private. You don't have to you don't have to have this stuff pop up. So. Um, you did talk about uh, password management. I've talked about this a bunch of times, and I'm a big per, big user of 1Password. I don't know if you are. Oh, uh, are you? Uh, my, our CEO, David, is. I use it for a while, but I actually been really – I feel like the new password management, Apple's own features have been yeah. working well for me, so I'm just using that right now. Okay. Um, well, I, I, I'm using both. I mean, I know some people just turn off uh, uh, iCloud Keychain and just uh, – uh, just use uh, just that, or they use uh, either one. But I like both because I'm I'm managing it in both places, and I might have some place in one place another. And then plus I get used to it. And then people ask me about it. Um, so so you just like the keychain? You're 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 happy with that? Yeah, I mean in the past I didn't think that the keychain was was good enough, but the features with iOS 12 that it now added is that it mm-hmm. will uh, recommend passwords and help you log in to third party apps. It used to be just in Safari that yeah. you would get password suggestions and that you would get the auto fill options. Yes. But now when you're also logging into, you know, increasingly apps that you're using, uh, require you to have an account. And okay. so, you know, it's a pain if you have to manually log in every time you don't want to do that. So yeah. now, now Apple's own password management features will do that for you. Another thing that's awesome is if you go into settings and then into the password management, right. it'll tell you, you'll see a little exclamation point next to all of the accounts that have a duplicate that you, you're using the same password for, yeah. which, right. you know, hopefully I'll, I'll this isn't I'm, you, but if I'll admit it, I do it. <laughs> I do it sometimes too. It's uh, and so now you can go in and, you know, tap on each account that has a duplicate and t- it'll take you to the website where you can go reset and hopefully use one of Apple's suggested yeah. strong passwords instead. I think the biggest thing that using Apple's password management has required me to do though, is to switch to Safari as my default mm-hmm. browser on my desktop as well. Cause if you're using Safari on your phone, but you're using Chrome right. or something, you know, that was what I was using on your desktop, then you're not going to get those autofill options mm-hmm. when you're using your desktop. And so really you're going to still end up having kind of a fragmented system. Right. So now I've switched to Safari on my desktop as well, which I I actually miss certain things about Chrome. <laughs> yeah. What do you use? I, I mean, I use Safari mostly on on the um, on the iPhone. Um, sometimes I I have I'm a browser freak, so I have tons of browsers. On, I have two picks today. There are there browsers too that are private privacy browsers. Um, Firefox I've used. Uh, Google uh, Chrome I've used. Uh, but I mean, I'm in fine with with Safari. I'm so I'm so used to it on the um, on the iPhone. 
Mm. Strangely enough, on a Mac, I, I'm a Firefox guy. I use the Firefox, and uh, I know a lot of people like to use Chrome. I have both on there. I go back and forth depending because there are some like there's some sites and some services that may not necessarily work with Firefox, but they work with Chrome or vice versa. On the right Mac, on the Mac. So, but I mean, even on iOS, I mean, I, on my iPad and my iPhone, both. Um, I'm I've got all the browsers on there, so if my my choice to, uh, uh, to 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 use whichever browser I so choose. <laughs> so. Uh, and uh, so but you're, the, you're uh, agnostic when it comes yes. to browsers. So, so I'm like. probably, I mean, I don't use Safari as much on my Mac as uh, I do on the on my iOS device. So, uh, but no, the, the browser on iOS, I'm used to it, and, and I like the reading mode, and I don't think a lot of that works. With that, that that's kind of the best thing. On yeah, the, on the browser is going in reader mode and then to eliminate all those gosh darn ads ads that keep popping up on websites and uh, uh, so. But uh, yeah. And then you also mentioned uh, Memojis. I mean, I mm-hmm. created my Memoji. Do you, I assume you have yours? Uh, I do have yeah, one. Yeah. That's one Does we it look have like fun. You? <laughs> I mean, I, I tried to make it look like me. Some people just, you know, create they got the long fun. hair and everything. <laughs> yeah, and I think I've got sunglasses that are like mine, and like a hat. You know, you can <laughs> switch out accessories and things like that. I mean, this one it's not a super practical feature, but it is yeah. fun. It, you go into your messages app and when you're, you know, in that window, you see a scrolling app list of your, of your apps above the keyboard. And if you tap the one that has a little monkey icon yeah. from there, you can set up your own Memo G. So it's an avatar that looks like you, or you can make it look like whatever fun character you want. Yeah, yeah. And then from there, the nice thing about it, that's a little bit different than, have you ever tried the Bitmoji, which yes. lets you, you know, <laughs> I get one friend when I send them a bitmoji. What he replies back? You didn't just send me a bitmoji. <laughs> he, he he hates them. He hates them with a passion. So I said, okay, I know not to send you a bitmoji anymore. <laughs> I've actually got I, I've actually got it customized because they have it customized where you can put it for like sports teams. And I'm a Chicago Cubs fan, so I have a uh, my Cubs hat, and my Cubs jersey on every time I send him emoji. That uh, uh, I'm sorry, the bitmoji. Bitmoji. Uh, that uh, that's what I'm wearing whenever the, you see the image of me. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think emojis are fun. I went through a phase, I feel like, where I was sending them to everybody. Lately, I haven't been as much. The fun thing about Bitmoji is they just have tons of uh, suggested, you know, based on the day of the week or what's going on, little scenes with your uh, avatar, which makes them more funny. Whereas the emoji you create, you have to create it yourself, like in terms of it, you you can send, I think it's a 12 second video. uh, I think it's gotten longer now. And it has audio, seconds. so you can be you can like send an actual message saying something to people through the messages app, and I mean I think it's pretty fun. Yeah. So, well, that's it. Just a little bit of tips. So we've talked about so much today. We probably got another <laughs> hour in just tips alone here. Uh, but I know. you've got a good catalog list of apps here. I'm very impressed that you shared with me shared with the listeners this uh, this week. So you've got five. Well, I added the measure app because you talked about it in the, in the magazine. But, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, why don't you uh, go ahead through some of these these app that you with this, for these app picks? And I only have two, so you have okay. me here. So, <laughs> so my most yeah, <laughs> being a, a goody two shoes, choosing too many. <laughs> no, yeah. So my my app most recent app discovery is this app called radio. It has oh. like five O's on there in the spelling for uh, those of you who want to try downloading it. So this is a really interesting app. It should, when you, when you open it, it's a map of the world and you can mm-hmm. choose any country you want and whoops, there you go. And, uh, you choose a uh, decade. It starts in 1950s, goes through cool. 2010. So you can choose a decade and it'll play music originating from that country in that time. Yeah. So that's just a fun way to have. Uh, if you saw the, the all the books I have behind app. me here on my bookshelf of all the music books I have from Joel Whit- Whitburn and all the billboard charts, this this is an app right up my alley here is I love music. and You uh, should try yeah, it. Yeah, that's, that's getting on my iPhone here when we're done today. I have to check that out. That's awesome. Yeah, that's I've a- been more musical these days. <laughs> and so I've enjoyed that one. Another one on my list is Yousician, uh, spelled Y-O-U, Zition. Mm-hmm. Um, and that I'm using to learn to play the ukulele. Oh, wow. <laughs> so and this one, it more does. about you. <laughs> it, yeah, it has, it requires in-app purchases. And oh, okay. so, yeah. you know, the ukulele is one of the instruments that is not free. I think you, you can mm-hmm. get some of the lessons for free. Uh, but it, it's pretty cool. Like it has guided lessons for, uh, a lot of popular songs, uh, and you can choose to, you know, whether you just want to practice 10 minutes a day or 20 mm-hmm. minutes a day. And so I've been just 
I've been enjoying that a lot. It's just, you know, it's just a hobby. Um, insight timer is another app that I put in there. This is a meditation app. Hmm. There are some ones that are pretty expensive out there. I'm trying to remember the name of the most popular one. Like calm. Maybe. Yeah. I feel like there are some that are like 10 or $12 a month to use, but this one, while there is a premium version, there's a lot of guided meditations in there and, uh, just a timer in there that will do like a gong at the beginning and end, um, that you can use for free. So everybody must like it. Yeah. And it's one thing that's nice about it. It'll show you people nearby that are meditating. So I have like a few friends who use it and they'll be like, Oh, Kaylee just tried this meditation, Mm -hmm. you know, to reduce stress. You might want to try it too. So yeah, it looks like a lot of in-app purchases. This, but uh, right at the top is the premium one for sixty dollars for this this app. But it looks like you could yeah. at least do some things for free, right? Yeah, I've I haven't paid anything for it, and I've still gotten a lot out of it. Um, okay, I'll my last one I want to share is One Second Every Day. That is an app that uh, you can take a short little picture or video mm-hmm. every day, and it strings it together into so you can like yeah, share highlights like from cool. your month or whatever. So it's kind of just a fun way to preserve memories. And I found that it kind of creates a cool video at the end of it. Even I'm not much of a photographer, (laughs) but it's still for me, I did like one for last fall and that my sister had a baby and I had, you know, different fun events. And so just stringing that all together, I was like, oh, a lot happened in this time. And I was able to capture a lot of it with this short little video. So does does, uh, Apple Clips, is that very similar to this? I, yeah, it is a little similar to that. Uh, I one second that every day <laughs> costs four ninety nine, and Clips I think is free, isn't it? So yeah, Clips is free. I, actually, I might have bought this app. I think somebody talked about it once before because you know I just I have all this credit sitting in my my Apple app app account, so <laughs> I got to buy, <laughs> thing, buy things crazy here. So, uh, but uh, yeah, this I've I've actually tried this app. It is it is pretty cool. Uh, so, um, and then. Uh, if you just want to touch a little bit on the measure app uh, that you did yeah. uh, review on, I, I linked to the show notes is uh, to the support app, the, the support uh, article on it. But uh, if you want to just briefly talk about it, what you Sure. Thought. Yeah. So Apple released the measure app with iOS 12 or around that time, at least. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's a pretty cool use of augmented reality. Yes. Like you look through your camera viewfinder and you can measure things in the real world. Uh, so this app, I think it's, if you're doing really precise measurements, like for instance, I was buying blinds for my office the other Mm -hmm. day and that you need to know down to like the quarter inch, (laughs) the dimensions there. So I got out a tape measure to make sure that I got it right. But I found that it does a pretty good job in general, um, especially for more, (coughs) for well-defined edges, uh, different objects. And so basically you just pull it out and you can mark point points that would be like the corners mm-hmm. of an object. Yep. And uh, you also have to kind of like scan the area to get yeah. a flat so it can see a flat surface and sort of get its bearings. And then it will give you dimensions. You can export a photo uh, from the measure app that will have a little go to your photos app and we'll have the dimensions that it's saved for you to yep. bring wherever you need to bring. So that's a cool, I feel like it's one of the more practical ways that I've it seen is. augmented reality applied so far. Yeah, I've, I've tried it. And, uh, We'll also link to your article in the in the, in the show notes so people can see your, your comprehensive review of this app. And, uh, Thank you. So we could talk about that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, let me get to my apps real quick. Um, the first one I found was uh, an, um, is if everybody's familiar with the the, the privacy search engine DuckDuckGo. Uh, mm-hmm. It's um, uh, it's been around for a while. It's the, the it's the uh, the competitor to Google. People say saying people don't want any more my my information out there with Google. So I'm using DuckDuckGo. Well, this is they actually created a privacy browser. Um, on uh, in iOS, and uh, really, what this does is it it, it uh, and, and I think that's just, that's kind of uh, simple. What they say here in the, in the link here to the to the app, privacy simplified, and then at DuckDuckGo, we believe the internet should not feel so creepy. <laughs> so, uh-huh. so it it does allow you to uh, to to, pr- to to browse uh, privately and be able to go through and search things, and it's and it's. Uh, Got different uh, widgets and such, um, and uh, again another one of those browsers. Like I told you, I'm a browser junkie, so uh, got all these different browser apps. So check that one out. And uh, the other one I had uh, was also a um, a privacy browser is called Brave, um, and uh, it's a it's an ad blocker uh, uh, browser which you can browse for blocking ads and such. And it's gotten some decent reviews. Um, I just downloaded this the other day, so I haven't really tried a, a, a lot. So. Uh, but check that one out too. It's a yeah, simple browser, so 
But uh, I saved for best for last. We wanted to talk about iPhone life, and um, and I wanted to let you tell us about Insider. Insider has been an awesome service that I would been a subscriber to for a long time. And that was what, what inspired me to, to reach out to you and to have you come on the show. And, of course, you're going, you we're partnering with, uh, with my Apple user group and a lot of that stuff. So why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about Insider and iPhone Life in general, about who, what, what, what's, what makes the, the magazine tick and, uh, and uh, go through there. Great. Thanks, David. Yeah, yeah, so iPhone Life is an independent publishing company. We have now had our magazine ever since the iPhone came out, basically, yep. Um so we've been around for about a decade as iPhone life. Um, and in the past few years, we have launched a monthly Mm -hmm. subscription service called iPhone life insider. And that's our premium membership that helps you really get the most out of your device. So really uh, our, our readers love their Apple devices and are usually have the suspicion that they could be getting more out of them because they are capable of so much, but sometimes you need a little help to get there. So With iPhone Life Insider, we try to make it really easy for people to learn how to get more out of their devices in a fun, easy, convenient way. So you you get a digital subscription to the magazine. Mm -hmm. You get a video tip every day that's just a minute or two. I look forward to every day. It comes in my mailbox. (laughs) I I watch every video. It's just great information. I mean, I I even use it because of me doing things in my Apple user group. I want to get the information. So it's it's awesome. Oh, I love hearing that. Yeah, (laughs) we... That, that's one, uh, probably one of our favorite features or, you know, fan favorites, which, so you get a one to two minute video that teaches you something you can do with your device. Mm-hmm. We also have in-depth, <clears throat> excuse me, in-depth guides on different topics. So mm-hmm. if you buy a new iPad, uh, or you get a new iPhone, you can have a guide that will teach you just kind of all the basics of how to use your device. Yep. Or we, every time a new version of iOS comes out, we have a guide right away that will teach you all the new features. Yep. So with iOS 13 coming up, you'll be the first to know all the new features. Yes. Uh, we have Ask an Editor, a feature that allows you to talk to our editors if you're having a, any sort of tech problem with your Apple devices, and we'll help lead you. you through to <laughs> yeah lead you through to find a solution. Um, and we also have an insider version of our podcast, so you get ex- you get exclusive yeah. content and an ad free experience. So that is that our. Too. Ins- it's fun to listen to that too. So, so <laughs> see how we have so much, so much similarity here on my show here with you guys. Uh, that's why it was just an absolutely perfect fit for you to come on the, uh, the show today is to, to talk about uh, all the stuff that's on here. You didn't even touch about talk about the guides. The guides are awesome. Um, you had some great guides. You just did the one on iOS 12. I, I use that as a Bible and look look at that all the time. And Apple Watch, you did some great things on that too. So, oh, uh, I'm glad look, to hear it's been helpful for you. Yeah, 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 we have one on Siri too. I feel like a lot of people yep, don't I, uh, know you know, how to set up series that it works really well for you. So we have a guide on that. Yeah. So if you go to iphonelife.com slash insider, you can learn yeah. more about the program. Yeah. Check it out. And, uh, then it's, it's definitely well worth uh, the investment uh, to find more information. Of course you find a lot of information here too. So, uh, <laughs> but I can't believe the hours gone by. We just I know. We had so much fun. This was such a great show. I, and I knew it would be. I was very excited. And I'm, it, it really turned out that way. So, um, so well, thank uh, you for having me. I, I can't thank you enough for being here. Um, how do people reach you if uh, they want to uh, be able to get uh, send any information to you? And uh, uh, I, I don't know if you're active on social media. How, how do they reach you? Yeah. Uh, Donna at iPhoneLife.com is my email address. That's okay. a great way to reach me directly. Okay. I would say that's probably the best way. Okay, great. And see, I didn't even ask you, and I put that in the notes. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, let's wrap things up here today. Uh, and that's a wrap for this week. Let, please send your comments, questions, and suggestions to our email address at feedback at intouchwithios.com. You can follow us on Twitter at in touch with iOS. You can subscribe in your favorite podcatcher, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, and TuneIn Radio. Or better yet, go to our website at intouchwithios.com where all the links to listen to us are there. I am your, your I, I am Dave Ginsburg, and you can find me on Twitter at DaveG65. Thanks again, Donna, for being here. Thank you for having me. And uh, thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you next time.